I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to the News Du Jour, a calmer space to consume the news. So, as promised, today we are spending the full episode covering President Donald Trump's indictment in full detail. Let's get into it. So, obviously, news of this indictment broke at the end of last week, and we had already produced our last episode for the week, and I was really eager to cover this full force for you guys and answer what I would think are your burning questions about this case. So I thought instead of rushing it and trying to tack it on for you guys, I would just go ahead and spend all of Monday's episode on this subject so that we can get into the weeds and really discuss the ins and outs of this. And that way we're prepared for tomorrow because that's when Trump is going to court. But Without further ado, we'll go ahead and get into the meat of it. So a federal criminal investigation against a former president. Honestly, it's kind of earth shattering. But before we get into all the details of this case, there are a couple things that I wanted to go over here at the top so that you're fully understanding the big picture context of what is going on and who the key players are. So number one, who is Jack Smith? So we've covered this when the investigation began and talked about him since, but Jack Smith is a registered independent who has a record of prosecuting war crimes and similar cases. So he was chosen as this sort of bipartisan person to lead the investigation regarding all of the boxes of classified documents found at Mar-a-Lago. So I wanted to clear that up. That's who he is. He is not a Democrat. He's not out to get anybody. He's just a very neutral person that was chosen to lead this. So next up, how does this differ from the case in New York? So I wanted to make sure you guys understood this before we get into the weeds. It actually differs a lot from the case that's going on in New York. Those were significant charges because they were the first charges of a former president ever. So they were civil charges, though, and that is a huge uh, factor. These charges being brought now are the first time a president has ever been charged with federal criminal charges, and they carry much harsher punishments, which we will get into. But I've also heard that this case differs because it appears to be a much stronger case than the one in New York. It's built on video evidence, voice recordings, and text messages, more like hard evidence rather than witness testimony. Two of Trump's lead attorneys actually resigned the day that the charges came out, so it seems that they realized how serious and ironclad these charges were and jumped ship. Also, before we jump in, I wanted to make sure that you guys understood Trump also faces an investigation that's going on in Georgia, as well as additional charges from E. Jean Carroll, who he has continued to defame after losing to in court. But those are all separate cases from this one. So there's the New York case, Georgia investigation, E. Jean Carroll, and then this case. This is the case That is all about those classified documents that were found in boxes at Mar-a-Lago, Trump's Florida resort. So, again, we're talking about boxes and boxes and boxes of classified documents. This is not a couple that he forgot to turn in or accidentally put in his locker. These are boxes and boxes, hundreds of documents, and they were stacked in highly accessible places like bathrooms. And the National Archives was asking him to return these boxes over and over and over again. Finally, they brought action in the form of a subpoena once he did not comply with their requests. And thus, this investigation got underway. 
So now that we have all that settled and we're all on the same page about what case this is and what it's about, I wanted to go over some of the basics. So at 3 p.m. on Tuesday, tomorrow, Trump will go through processing at the Florida courthouse. Before then, the Secret Service is going to have to scramble to figure out how to secure this courthouse where Trump is set to appear. He is obviously expected to plea not guilty, but we'll wait and see on that. Initially, he had posted to Truth Social, his social media platform, that he was going to be indicted on seven counts. And it turns out, you guys, it's 37 counts. So what exactly are these charges? Well, 30 of the charges relate to him removing these classified documents and keeping them. The other seven charges relate to him obstructing the Justice Department's investigation as it was underway. And those are actually some really serious charges as well, which we will get into. Jack Smith has said that he has video and audio recordings of Trump bragging to people that he had these classified documents and even showing them to people where he acknowledged that they were classified. So it sounds like a really strong case if he actually says on audio, these are classified. I mean, he can't deny that he knew he had classified documents that he shouldn't have. The term willful retention will also be incredibly key. Obviously, when it comes to court cases, everything comes down to terminology. And the term willful retention is basically the everything hinges on that term. In this case, it means basically that they have to prove that he knew he was holding these documents and that he shouldn't be and that they were classified. So that willful part is meaning that he had active involvement in this. So that's kind of the burden of proof. But why Florida and not D.C.? So that is a big question because obviously these documents were taken from D.C. But they have to bring the charges in the location where the crime occurred. Trump kept the documents at Mar-a-Lago, as we know, and not D.C., and so that was where he was refusing to return them. He was in Florida at that time, so the vast majority of these crimes apply to Florida versus D.C., so that's pretty much why they initially brought these charges in Florida. Could they bring additional charges in D.C. in the future? I think that that's possible because obviously that's where he removed the char- removed the documents. But we'll have to wait and see on that. And then who is this aide that they charged and what is his deal? I don't know if you guys have seen, but not only was Trump charged, but someone who worked for him was charged as well. There is an aide named Walt Nauta, and he was actually also charged in this case. It seems likely that he will be offered some type of deal, but he was charged with conspiracy and making false statements as well as withholding documents, according to the New York Times. If he is offered a deal, it will almost certainly involve ratting out his old boss in exchange. So, That is something that Trump loyalists don't want to do. But it turns out many of his old staff have already ratted him out. And some high profile journalists who have more info on this case have said Trump is going to be very upset when he finds out how many people were cooperating with this investigation. So I would imagine another question on your mind is what could the consequences be if Trump is convicted? So he could definitely be facing prison time for these charges, you guys, should he be convicted. Each of his Espionage Act charges carry a maximum of a 10-year sentence. His conspiracy and false statement charges carry five years maximum. And the obstruction charges, which he has seven of, each carry a 20-year maximum. Pretty crazy that the obstruction of the investigation actually carries a heavier charge than the crimes themselves. But again, those are maximums and they can always stack these concurrently. But 
if you're wondering whether prison time would be on the table, it definitely seems likely if you were found guilty. Now, one more thing of note on this case. The judge appointed to this case is a woman who was actually appointed by Trump himself and has been accused in the past of going way easy on the former president. So I just think that's something important to understand going in that this woman is definitely not biased against Trump. If anything, she's biased towards him. The former president was basically run out of D.C. following January 6th. He was run out of New York, not allowed to do any business there anymore. And now he's being arrested in his new home state of Florida. It feels like he has nowhere else to run. Jack Smith said, quote, we have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone, end quote. But that's actually the craziest part of this whole case, you guys. Experts are saying that if Trump were to be elected president before the trial was over, he could force the Justice Department to drop the case or maybe even pardon himself. So crazy. So it is in Trump's best interest to draw this case out as long as possible and try to get back into that Oval Office before the judge drops the hammer. And that's exactly what actually makes this case different from anyone else's. How quickly will things move and what the results will be? That is anybody's guess, but we will definitely keep you posted, as always, here on News Du Jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, Loneliness is part of being human. It reminds us that we are not complete in and of ourselves. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review or shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us be able to keep creating the news du jour. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram and just sugarfreemedia, all one word, on TikTok. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.